to work in his White House. Now those people have a warning for America. Trump is not fit to be president again. Here's his vice president. Anyone who puts himself over the Constitution should never be president of the United States. It should come as no surprise that I will not be endorsing Donald Trump this year. His defense secretary. Do you think Trump can be trusted with the nation's secrets ever again? No. I mean, it's just irresponsible action that places uh, our service members at risk, places our nation's security at risk. His national security advisor. Donald Trump will cause a lot of damage. The only thing he cares about is Donald Trump. And the nation's highest ranking military officer. We don't take an oath to a king or a queen or a tyrant or a dictator. And we don't take an oath to a wannabe dictator. Take it from the people who knew him best. Donald Trump is a danger to our troops and our democracy. We can't let him lead our country again. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. That ad from the Harris campaign is set to air on Fox News tomorrow, debate day. Let's bring into our conversation Claire McCaskill at the table. Also joining us, White House reporter for The Washington Post, Tyler Pagers here. Tyler, I want to read from your great reporting. You write this. Harris spent most of the past four days ensconced in Pittsburgh's Omni William Penn Hotel for an intensive debate camp. Her aides created a mock setup to mimic the layout of the debate studio, cast a veteran Donald Trump stand-in to unleash harsh attacks and offensive comments, and put the vice Vice president through hours of rehearsed questions. Um, those are tactics. What is the strategy? Yeah, I think there's two things that they're really trying to achieve here. One is a recognition that many voters are still getting acquainted with Kamala Harris. She's not a known quantity the way Joe Biden or Donald Trump is. So they recognize that uh, tomorrow night she's going to have to intersperse her answers with elements of her biography, particularly her time before serving as vice president. So they want to give her an opportunity to continue to introduce herself and her record, what they say of accomplishment in California as a prosecutor, as attorney general, but also talk about her agenda. They're hoping that Harris is able to create a clear contrast with Donald Trump on key issues, particularly abortion and the economy, but sort of do that uh, in tandem with talking about her biography and present what they say is a, in her slogan, a new way forward, paint Donald Trump as someone that's trying to bring the country backward at the tail end of an era, or Kamala Harris, younger, the first female president, a woman of color, trying to usher in a new generation of leadership for the country. We know what Trump will do, because he doesn't do a lot of new things, and we've seen this maybe three times now. He will paint her as being soft on crime and a San Francisco liberal. He will have granular details um, about heinous crimes likely committed by people in the country illegally and blame her for them. And I could see him throwing in some smears about the withdrawal from Afghanistan, which is only put in motion because of a deal he negotiated, and but for the interventions of some of his national security team would have done so at Camp David on 9-11. Um, what's the strategy for dealing with all that? Yeah, I think there's some frustration in Harris world about that because that, that's this fight over the microphones. They wanted Kamala Harris to be able to interject, interrupt, try to redirect Trump when he says things that are not true, and, and they expect him fully to be doing that. Um, and so that's one, um, well, one thing that they've been frustrated about is that they feel that she may not be able to be as effective in pushing back and countering some of those lies or falsehoods or things that she wants to push back on. So in conversations I've had with people close to Harris and her campaign, they say that she's going to try to balance both of those things. When she has an opportunity to speak, to correct some of the most outlandish claims that Trump makes, but not try to get too bogged down, because trying uh, trying to fight fight Trump's lies or myths truth is, is a losing effort uh, a lot of the time. And we've seen that as Trump has done interviews with mainstream journalists, as he's debated other candidates, trying to fact check him in real time is quite difficult. So they're hoping she's able to do that at times, but also not get too bogged down and, and go on the attack as well. Claire, I mean, the attacks that Trump will launch tomorrow write themselves. We could write them here and probably get 90 percent close to exactly what he's going to say. Again, he's not capable of newness, just new lows. Um, it, it feels like we know he'll attack her on crime for being a San Francisco liberal. She's the prosecutor. He's the one accused of crimes. But he's also someone who put two um, felons back on the street with his own personal pardons who went on to beat their wives. I mean, his, his record on crime is a real vulnerability if people know about it. Well, I think she has an opportunity, Nicole, to explain to people 
about the reality of evidence. Um, you know, she's got credibility as a prosecutor. Our entire criminal justice system operates on evidence. Evidence that has to meet a certain rigor. There's evidence you can object to for all kinds of reasons. She understands this. Donald Trump has no evidence of any wrongdoing in the election. There is evidence, however, of his supporters attacking police officers. They've been convicted. There is evidence of him committing crimes. He's been convicted and been found liable. And if he is abandoning the concept of evidence, he is abandoning the Constitution. And I think she's got a real, mm. I think she sh could do this in a really clever way. And if I know her, she will, saying that, you know, we can't, we can't just lie. We just, we have to have evidence. We have to have facts. That's the only way we move forward. I also think um, she's got to remember that, yes, she's got to be really strong. Strong is most important, that she's capable and ready to do this and to introduce more of her biography. But she also has to show that she is joyous and that the country is not going to be in a you know trash talking America for the next four years. She's not going to do that. She doesn't believe America sucks. She thinks America is wonderful, and she thinks there's great opportunities, and she's got to bring that lightness to it, even if he is stalking or, you know, lying or all the stuff he tries to do in debates. She's got to keep that tone one that everybody sees, okay, this is different. And she what, is different. What do you do going in to, like, nobody on Fox is saying Trump's got to be light and joyful and honest and factual. Like, he just has to zip his pants up. Like, what do you do with the absolute mix, you know, asymmetry of expectations? I, I, I do think she's suffering from high expectations and Trump from low expectations. That's not a good way to go into a debate. Um, and, and we all know what he's capable of. He's capable of dragging the debate down to a place that, frankly, is ugly and is where snake's bellies hang out. And so it is. I think that's really hard. You know, I also think that she, she has to separate herself a little bit from Joe Biden. Um, and that's tricky because you don't want to be disrespectful of Joe Biden, but she needs to be the new kid on the block. She needs to, and here's the disadvantage Trump has. Everybody knows the vice president doesn't have real power. Everybody knows that. I mean, the role is a diminishing role because they have no power. They go where the president tells them to go. They do what the president tells them to do, but she didn't really have power to influence policy. And I think she needs to stress that she now will have the power to direct policy in a way that she never has before. She can do that without being disrespectful of Joe Biden. And it just feels like there's a pence line in there somewhere, right? Of course. I mean, I, mean, I stand by his agenda. Um, yours didn't even endorse you.